recently went to my first autocross event ever. And what is autocross, you may be asking? Well, you're going to get a look at it next on the Monday Morning Racer. Hello motorsports enthusiasts, Lee Craft here. I'm the Monday Morning Racer and recently I attended my first autocross event. Now I had seen autocross before with such events done by Optima Batteries, but this one was conducted by the Finger Lakes region of the Sports Car Club of America or the SCCA. And that site SCCA.com will give you all the information you need on what autocross actually is and I will have it linked in the description below. They also tell you how you can get involved with SCCA and autocross. By the way, autocross is a great way for you to be involved with motorsports at an entry level or at a highly modified and cost level if you so desire it. What's great about autocross? Well, all you need is a parking lot, an abandoned airstrip, a big tarmac, some cones, set up a mock road course with all the classic designs of a road course from solemn to hairpin, sweeping turns, hard braking air areas, accelerating zones, and you hit it with a time attack and you basically have autocross. Who can be a part of it? Well, just about anybody. Someone even like me with my 2010 Kia Soul, I could hit the track, or you could come out with something with wings and aerodynamic assistance and hit it. There's a class for just about everybody. And what's the best thing? We well, don't have to worry about hitting a concrete wall or someone swiping you and knocking you out of the race, and you have a long week in the garage to get your car ready for next weekend. So, Here's a live look at what I captured at the autocross event for the Finger Lakes Region Sports Car Club of America at the Marketplace Mall in Henrietta, New York. Now mind you, my footage is not great. I have never captured an autocross event before. I don't have the best tech. It began getting night and you need better tech to shoot at night. I found that out. And not to mention, autocross is rather challenging to shoot from beginning to end depending on the course layout and I found that out for myself. So enjoy the view of the cars, walk-bys, and autocross itself. Until next time, God bless and keep the pedal to the metal.
Okay, so I'm back. Uh, Marcus just finished with a time of 30.8. And here comes Kate Presley, and he's finishing. And there goes a Mr. Sue, who's been right this time, turning around like this. Fire, by the way. Good luck with that. Here 
comes Carter Cook. With a time of 42.425, good for 12 in Navajo. And here comes the CB car, doing CB noises. Monday morning racer and I'm out here at my first autocross event. I've seen autocross on TV but yesterday, Saturday, I saw that they were having this event in Henrietta, New York and I figured I'd come out and been trying to get some shots but that's been challenging but I have been able to catch up with a few drivers. I got Jim here with me and he has got one of the showstoppers out here. It's a Camaro with big big tires on it and everybody talks about it, running some racing fuel. So Jim, why don't you tell us about your Camaro, its configuration, how long you've had it? Uh, well, I've that one since, what, 14, so five, six years, something like that. It's an 88, uh, originally a V6 RS uh, out of California. Now it's got a 350 crate motor in it from Chevy that was from 2000, a long story. Uh, pretty mild, about 330 horse when it was new. I haven't had a part since then, so who knows what it's doing now. Uh, light and flywheel, an M21 trans, uh, 410 rear end with a posi. The fun part is the big slicks that are on it. They're Hoosier Roadways uh, GT1 class tires. Uh, radials this year because they don't make the bias flies anymore. Thank you, Hoosier. That cost an extra couple hundred bucks a tire. Uh, it runs in C prepared class, which if you don't know autocross, there's four basic levels. You have street, street prepared, which is bolt-ons, uh, intakes, exhaust, but nothing internal. Prepared, which you still use the suspension hold points and the body's about right, but it's a race car. So that one has a fake cage in it to get it stiff, that stuff. And then above that, they have mod. And then there's a side tangent of street touring and street mod, but it runs in the intended to be a race car. It's too big for this. I like always tell people the right way to do this is get something small and nimble with good grip and enough power. And I clearly don't listen to myself. Jim, how long you been doing auto autocross, and why autocross instead of drag racing or circle track or anything of that sure, nature? Sure. Sure. Uh, I've been doing it since 98 or 99, I don't remember. Um, I have t-shirts that are really old. Uh, I do this because the cost to fun ratio is really high. Um, and I don't do drag racing because turning. Sliding these things is fun. Going in a straight line and getting the shifts right is a challenge. I get it, but it's not as much fun. <laughs> Um, and then circle track, it's, well this isn't wheel to wheel or wheel to anything. If I screw it up out here, I hit a cone. Um, my loss potential is very low out here. I mean, you prepare cars and stuff like that, you'll break stuff, but that happens in everything. I'm not going to hit anything out here, and I'm definitely not going to hit anybody, or more importantly, have anyone hit me and ruin my weekend. So it's, it's a great way to learn car control, yes, but to compete and have very low risk. Jim, if someone was interested in getting into autocross, first car, how do they get started? What, what options would you say you need to go with? All right, so uh, autocross, there's a lot of different clubs. SCCA is this one. Um, you can go through SCCA.com and find your local club, and you know, it's the internet, you'll find it. Uh, to go to an event, find out where it is, have a, start with a street car. You don't gotta go nuts. The first thing you gotta fix is you aiming wings. Um, and then get everything loose out of it, right? So all the stuff you leave in the back and all the stuff in the junk doesn't matter. The most embarrassing dents in a car are the ones that are pointing outwards, because that's a owner intelligence problem. Uh, and then, you know, you don't even have to have a helmet for most clubs. We have loaner helmets, so show up a bit before registration and tell people don't know what you're doing. And they'll point you in the right direction. Uh, locally here, we have a novice program, so you show up, uh, you register all that and they'll put an instructor in the car with you for every run you need until you figure it out. And then we run a school once a year in case you're getting really bugged 
get the good bite into it and eventually you've been doing this so long you don't remember why you're doing it. And it's anything. I mean, you, should, you probably got plenty of footage walking around here. If the rules for cars are they have to be shorter than their track width. That's it. We'll take anything. Awesome, man, Jim. Look, you got a great car. It's definitely one of the uh, cars that are talked up out here, I've already noticed. So thank you for your time and hope you do well tonight. Well, I should. I'm the only one in my class, so. <laughs> I'm first, I'm also last. <laughs> thank you, Jim. You're welcome. Alexander just finished with a count of 30, about 5, 7, 6. Scott heads out in the Subaru. Nine seven three nine. Good for four. Good for four. 